Hi, this is week one, session five of Have a Ball, writing your first novel. This is the last session of our first week. And I will be calling the last session of each week, the week in review. So, we are at the end of week one. I hope you had a ball reconnecting to your child energy, using it to explore states of wonder and possibility. I hope you've enjoyed taking yourself on adventures. I hope you have taken some adventures. And if not, you, we still have a couple of, a day and a half more left uh, to this week. And early into next week, I hope you will take yourself on some adventures, exploring both your external and internal worlds. And I hope you have begun to use this energy to uh, gather the raw material for your first novel. Your prompts for the next couple of days over the weekend and into early next week before we begin our week two sessions. Prompt one, keep playing. Relax, relax. Oh, I have to remind myself to take a deep breath sometimes because I tend to do some breath holding. So when you find yourself tensing at all about anything, not, not about writing this novel, because why would you be tense about writing this novel? Because you're having a ball, right? The process is fun. Breathe deep, allow, daydream, play in your trance states. Also, and something I haven't shared before, don't be so quick. I, I encourage you, of course this is not a mandate, but I encourage you to not be so quick to fill silence or activity voids. It's okay to do nothing. I just finished last night, I finished watching the bonus sections of the movie Patton, which was made in the early 1970s, I believe, and Francis Ford Coppola was the primary screenwriter. And I watched the film and I also watched all of the bonus material. And you know, it took a few hours. I did it over a few days. And one of the one of the aspects of General Patton's personality that I found interesting. I, I enjoyed the film and I other than simply knowing of General Patton as an iconic, historic military figure, I didn't really know anything about him. Uh, I wanted to see the film because I happened to be a fan of George C. Scott and of Francis Ford Coppola. So what struck me about Patton's personality, he was a complex, interesting human being, as most of us are, was that when he wasn't actively engaged in war, and I don't mean being an occupation general, for example, after, after World War II was over, but he was a combat man, he always got into trouble. <laughs> he, he wasn't good at doing nothing. This was a man that, you know, if he wasn't in combat, he, he was lost. And his ability to be a strategic commander uh, was really his key strength. Uh, he had other strengths as an individual, but when he wasn't engaged in that, he, he literally got into trouble. So some of you might be historians or some of you might be, might be interested in watching the film, and I'm not going to recount all, all the details of that. But I'm suggesting, using this experience of learning about Patton as a metaphor, and, and I, I speak to myself as much as I speak to anyone who, who's listening to this session and who, who has chosen to take this 12-week journey for themselves and with, and with me, is that sometimes we are anxious about sitting still, about not doing anything, because, you know, 
if we have too much time in our hands, we get into trouble. <laughs> um, and there's an expression about that which eludes me. Um, you know, idle, idle time is the devil's worship or something like that. That may be true for some of us, and some of it may just be a cliche that we that tends to become a self fulfilling prophecy. But I really would like to offer a challenge to you to not tr not fill up activity void so quickly. In fact, doing nothing is historically has been the gateway to uh, all kinds of creative breakthroughs and breakthroughs for mankind. Um, doing nothing, solitude, silence, being still, offers so many surprises in creativity. Many of the world's greatest discoveries happened in play. Einstein uh, had many breakthroughs while riding his bicycle. He was huge on imagination. The Nobel Prize laureate in physics, Richard Feynman, came up with the new, his new thoughts that garnered the Nobel Prize while watching a spinning plate in a university cafeteria where he was considering whether or not he wanted to take this university job. And in watching this plate spin as a server uh, lost his balance and the plate was spinning before it fell to the floor, sparked an idea and and for Dr. Feynman, he continued, in his words, literally, to play with it, to play with this idea of the spinning plate, and this led him to a breakthrough in physics. So the second prompt is between now and the first session of week two, which is probably going to be on Tuesday or so, put, experiment with putting more air in your day. When waiting online, uh, or if you're on the phone, you know, waiting for customer service, like a 1-800 number, you know, you can sit there for a while. Uh, or if you're meeting someone and they're running behind, rather than rush to fill up the time, you know, by texting and updating your social media sites, uh, talking on the phone just to kill time with someone or searching on the internet on your mobile device experiment with not doing any of these ex experiment with just being these moments of air in your day add up so if you have an hour of free air time during the day, that's an hour you get to play with your novel. You know, we're often like, well, where am I gonna get the time to write a novel? Where am I gonna get the time to exercise when we want to add something new to our lives? Well, there actually is a lot of time that's threaded throughout our day. All we need to do is pay attention to it. So will we spend all of these, this air time, this cushion in our day, you know, constantly, you know, checking our phones and our our tablets and or will we use it to play with our first novel just food for thought hey this has been a growth opportunity for me i really enjoyed this first week i'm very much looking forward to the next 11 weeks i hope you are too and i will see you week two